More and more, I receive so many emails asking me for feedback. When I order a product from Amazon, they ask me uh, how quickly it was delivered. I get a separate email asking me to evaluate their packaging or their third-party seller. Uh, when I call my credit card company and talk to customer service, I get an email right away asking me for feedback, evaluating the phone call and the customer service representative. Everyone's asking us for feedback and many times we receive feedback as individuals or uh, part of the organizations we're affiliated with. And I think it's important to evaluate the feedback. You can't take everything at face value. And I want to talk more about this after today's scripture reading. First Samuel 12, verses 1 to 15. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everything you said to me, and have set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and gray, and my sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I accepted a bribe to make me shut my eyes? If I have done any of these, I will make it right. You have not cheated or oppressed us, they replied. You have not taken anything from anyone's hand. Samuel said to them, The Lord is witness against you, and also his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found anything in my hand. He is witness, they said. Then Samuel said to the people, It is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, and brought your forefathers up out of Egypt. Now then, stand here, because I am going to confront you with evidence before the Lord as to all the righteous acts performed by the Lord for you and your fathers. After Jacob entered Egypt, they cried to the Lord for help. And the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought your forefathers out of Egypt, and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God, so he sold them into the hand of Sisera, the commander of the army of Hazor, and into the hands of the Philistines and the king of Moab, who fought against them. They cried out to the Lord and said, We have sinned, we have forsaken the Lord and served the Baals and Ashtoreths. But now deliver us from the hands of our enemies, and we will serve you. Then the Lord sent Jerubbaal, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel, and he delivered you from the hands of your enemies on every side, so that you lived securely. But when you saw that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, was moving against you, you said to me, No, we want a king to rule over us, even though the Lord your God was your king. Now, here is the king you have chosen, the one you asked for. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you fear the Lord, and serve and obey him, and do not rebel against his commands, and if both you and the king who reigns over you follow the Lord your God, good. But if you do not obey the Lord, and if you rebel against his commands, his hand will be against you as it was against your fathers. From today's scripture passage, I just want to take a closer look at verse 12. But when you saw that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, was moving against you, you said to me, 
No, we want a king to rule over us, even though the Lord your God was your king. So this is an interesting story where the prophet Samuel is receiving criticism and feedback from the Israelites, the people of God. And it reminds me of when you're in a position to receive that feedback and receive that criticism, how do you respond? Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, photography and digital still photography and one of my favorite uh, photography companies is Fujifilm. I think they have awesome color and they make awesome cameras. And a few months ago there was a video of one of the top executives from Fujifilm speaking in Japanese but there was an English subtitle translation and he was saying that their company is well known for listening to the customer and taking care of the customer. And he was saying some of these requests from the customers, him and the experts don't agree. So he was saying, we believe the APS-C size sensor is big enough, but the customer, and he made this grimace on his face, but the customer keeps saying they need full frame. And he's like, oh, we're deciding, we're not sure. We think this is enough, this is good, but the customer wants this, oh, we don't know what to do. Another big issue was, he said, we think that 16 megapixel is good enough, but customer keeps asking for more. And he made this face and he said, even though we don't think it's the right move, we're going to listen to the customer. We're going to give them more megapixel. And it's interesting because everywhere we go, we receive feedback and complaints, but it doesn't mean that those complaints is 100% valid. Recently, I've been telling my church members, and people always complain to the pastors and the leaders. And I've been telling my leaders, just because someone complains to you, you can't give them 100% validation that their complaints are 100% valid and true. And when people complain to me about church, I try to tell them, I, I can see your perspective, I understand where you're coming from, but many times I tell them, I do not 100% agree with everything you said. And many times these people would dial it back and say, oh, okay, uh, I think I came on too strong, okay, okay. And my point is this, when you receive all this feedback and complaints, it doesn't mean that those complaints are 100% valid. In this passage, the people of God were grumbling against Samuel, the prophet. And think about how vulnerable Samuel must have felt. Because as the God-anointed and appointed leader and prophet, he was in place to speak to the people. But they complained. And they said, we don't necessarily want you, Samuel, to be our leader. We want a king to rule over us, just like the neighboring peoples. It's interesting, in the verse I read, they saw that uh, the Ammonites who were attacking them had a king named Nahash. Even the, the, the neighboring country that was attacking them had a king. And so they complained against Samuel and they said, we want to have a king just like the Ammonites and just like all the neighboring people. Imagine how personally Samuel could have taken it. And it's interesting because I think every time you compare yourself to others, to neighboring countries, to other organizations, to your competitors, it usually leads, comparison usually leads to sin. And they should have trusted in God's leadership. They should have trusted in God's plan. But they demanded their own plan. And this leads to a larger question, is the world becoming more like the church? Or is the church becoming more like the world? 
too often people in the church look at the world and the ways of the world and they think we need to be just like the world. We need to change the way we're doing things and we need to do it the way these corporations, the way the government, the way that the world is doing it. And I believe that the church needs to evaluate the criticism and the feedback better. And we need to see, do we need to become more like the world? And I believe we need to make the world more like the church. Or more importantly, we need to make the world more like Christ. As people who live in a very complex world, uh, we receive so much feedback and opinions and constructive criticisms. And I really hope that uh, we would evaluate in light of God's standard and God's view and the Bible. And I really hope that we would follow God's plan and uh, what God has implemented in our lives. Please join me in a prayer. Lord, we often do get confused. We often wonder if we made the right decisions, if we're doing the right thing. And I pray that you would just give us the mind of Christ and the heart of Christ to do things according to your standards and your plans. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.